Most people seem to have recovered their seats. Let the last few go widely. You have to click on the red thing at the bottom if you want a chair. Um, the uh, so we have we have a good good day today. I think. Um, start off with the status of viewer development and viewer beta. Um, anyone who's paying attention will have noticed that. Chewy went to the release channel and uh, got out of the way. And Sunshine server side baking has merged to viewer development. It is uh, undergoing its testing now and will, in due course, probably not a long time from now, move over to viewer beta and get to the beta channel, um, which will let. Nick's talk to in just a moment, um, but basically that's the status of things. Um, what comes next after that is still slightly up in the air, um, but that's not going to be right away. So we'll probably get a chance to talk again before that actually happens. Um, and you know, if if anything alarming is about to happen, I'll make do my best to to let you know about it, but we, we don't anticipate that. So uh, next up is, uh, let's say next for server-side appearance. Okay. Give us a... Uh, so, as Oz just said, we uh, merged down our uh, first release of the viewer code for Sunshine uh, yesterday. Um, and hopefully there will be a fairly smooth beta process. We're not expecting uh, too many regressions. We've been doing a lot of testing internally. Um, so if you guys uh, are not uh, on the path to releasing an update that is uh, server-side appearance enabled, uh, you should be doing so as soon as possible, please. Um, we're not ready to roll out the back end yet. Um, but uh, by the time the release process finishes up, we are going to start looking at uh, when that is going to happen. So uh, we need our users to uh, have new viewers for them to update. So our, our current strategy uh, is, unfortunately, we would like to um, see you guys have a server-side uh, appearance viewer in release uh, for at least a couple days um, so that we can find out from you if there are any more code or if you plan any more code dumps uh, for server-side baking. However, we are pretty much ready to release it. We just want to make sure that we're not going to release it and then end up a couple days later with more server-side baking stuff that we have to then do a follow-up release uh, because that's very problematic for us. So. Our strategy right now is to be ready with a release, um, which we're pretty much at that point now, I think. But uh, we're still sort of going to just sort of wait and see, depending on how your release goes. That's certainly fine, uh, assuming that you guys can have a relatively quick turnaround after we uh, get our release out. Um, assuming we don't dump a bunch of uh, additional bug fixes on you at the last minute. Well, that, that's that's right. That that's basically what's going to determine that. We're we're we've got uh, QA and we're getting ready to do a code freeze. Um, so I mean, we're right at that point now. My, my goal is to have uh, a release build ready, sitting on a hard drive somewhere, ready to go out should we need it, uh, and it will go out, providing you guys don't have new code coming in. The the only cautionary note is that you know you don't want to you don't want to put it out so close to the cutover date that your users, um, I mean your yeah your it's, users it's are a not bit of a, famous for updating quickly. Yeah, I, I realize that. So I'm I'm sort of trying to balance between the two here because I'm I'm pretty confident that 
once you guys put out a, a Sunshine release, you're going to find out that there's something that else needs to go out. And so I don't want to release at the same time you guys do and then find out that we have to release again, because that's going to make uptake from our users even harder. It's better for us just to do one release than to put out a release and then say, oh, by the way, you have to update again, if you see what I mean. So I'm playing a little bit of a balancing act here. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I just, you know, don't want to um, want to have... What, what kind, people, of, a, what kind of a time frame, happy. if you had to make a guess from the time that you put out your server-side baking viewer in a release... If you had to make a guess, what would your guess be between when you do that to when you flip the switch server side? Uh, it is not going to be immediate. Uh, we are definitely going to, um, hopefully, uh, once you guys are able to do a release as well, we're hoping to get uh, fairly widespread communication out asking everyone uh, to update their viewers um, and give people a chance to download and install the new viewers. Uh, and we're going to be looking at those stats very closely, hoping to get good uptake, uh, before throwing the, uh, switch. Um, but it's not going to be six months. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's going to be less than that. Two weeks. Would two weeks be a decent guess? Not, I'm not going to commit to two weeks. Um, it may not be impossible in that time frame. Uh, we're we're going to play it by ear. We don't have exactly. But it might be more like, like two weeks or less, or two weeks or more. It depends on the uptake, um, both for our users and for your users. Okay. Um, so we'll, okay. we'll we'll try and coordinate with you uh, once we start messaging out to people to update their viewers, so you guys can uh, do a similar push. So more likely, when a certain percent of the users are on an updated viewer, then you'll flip the switch. Well, we 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 would like to see as many as possible move forward. Most of ours move forward as soon as we make something available as an update. Um, uh, ours. Yeah, um, we, we, we have a, the updater, and uh, most users leave it set to install automatically, so they get the, the new release when it happens. Um, so uh, that's, that's not much of an issue for us. And um, given the historical pattern of updates in third-party viewers, uh, I don't think, frankly, that we're going to be willing to wait for most of them to voluntarily update on on your viewers we're we're going to provide adequate warning and as in as many channels and as broadly as we possibly can figure out how to do um and in collaboration with you and then at some point we'll throw the switch and everybody's avatars will turn gray um, in that in that regard us um is it safe to say that you may have a, like an actual official blog post somewhere explaining that people need to upgrade we'll their least, viewers? Yeah, I'm sure we will at least have a blog post. Okay, because that'll help too, because th that'll give the third-party viewer something to point to that says that, look, we're not just making this up. Yeah, we, we, we won't leave you out there. Um, okay. Right. So uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be... You won't have to say Linden Lab is about to do something. You can say, look at what Linden Lab is saying. Uh, you know, and uh, and and we'll we'll do something as proactive as possible. What we don't want to be true is we don't want um, we don't want to put in place the meme that we're trying to force you to force people to go from their favorite viewer to our viewer. So we want you to have an alternative in place and ready for right. them long before we actually push anybody anywhere so that they can go to the new spiffy version of their favorite viewer. Now, of course, that doesn't help the people that are still running viewers that aren't going to be updated, um, but there's no helping those people, I and mean, there's nothing we can do about that at this point. Uh, so there are a, you know, a tiny cohort of, of people still running Snow Globe or um, 123 or any number of literally several hundred uncontained one-off viewers um, 
So, uh, uh, and 300 and 70 some versions of Firestorm, uh, uh, which of course I'm sure most of those are self compiled uh, clones, but, um, and, and the Phoenix users, right? Uh, well, we, we do have some things in place uh, with Phoenix and Firestorm, um, not just the message of the day, but we can also uh, throw up a, a notification on the login screen that they have to click away from in order to log in. And uh, we can do some pretty scary writing on that, especially for Phoenix. Right. So um, we, we, we'll have to get that get that in done place and ready to go but that's uh we'll be we'll be communicating as proactively as as we possibly can um so other other issues with respect to server side appearance i'm um, actually I'm, I'm wondering about the other third party um so what are your plans for release date for server baking Date, or you can sort of play it by your like we are. I've I've been polling people, and um, most people either have a version available or can have basically on a moment's notice. So, um, well, we're about a week away from. Uh, it you know, everything going uh, according to plan, we should have um, a release build ready on a hard drive somewhere within a week. We did have, um, actually, I should bring this up just to make sure that nobody missed it. Um, there was one late-breaking change that got into um, our viewer. Nick, you want to talk about the avatar height thing? Just to make sure we did and everybody can say they heard it. But yeah, uh, we did have um, one bug with uh, avatar height where if your avatar was short enough and you turned down the avatar offset uh, to the minimum, uh, your avatar height would actually be negative, um, which does very interesting things with the camera and a few other things. Um, so we had a late breaking change where we uh, implemented a effective minimum where if your height would go uh, below, below uh, 0 0.1 meters, uh, we would bound it uh, up. We would increase it to about 0 0.1 meters. Um, so everyone should make sure that they have that patch, uh, unless you want your cameras pointed up at the sky. With, with regards to the height offset, is there uh, any chance we can get something like what we presently have in... Uh, Firestorm that's a little more granular? Um, not really. Unfortunately, our, uh, our system is uh, pretty explicit in um, binding things down to a single byte value. Also, the system is based on uh, values stored in wearables, which is how our backend is able to generate it. Um, so the uh, in-viewer interface uh, doesn't uh, work quite as well um, if you're trying to modify wearable values on the fly. I understood you were actually still doing some work on that, Nix. Is that right? Uh, there are a couple of uh, tweaks uh, just to get the behavior uh, correct um, that I am looking into, but um, we're not holding up our merge um, and are not necessarily uh, requirements for you guys to pick up, uh, but you guys are welcome to uh, take a look at. Um, okay, so well, we're not not gonna go there right now, Alaric. Um, 
server side HTTP uh, the server side HTTP changes. Madi updates for us on that. Not much. It's been quiet. Um, no bugs reported. I've been monitoring some data behind the scenes. Doesn't really tell me what the user experience is like, but no anomalies are showing up. Um, at this rate, um, I don't think there's any blockage to being uh, put on the full grid, but I'd love to hear if anyone's having any responses or experiences, good or bad, they can report. So other than that, it's just quiet. Okay, good. Um, quiet is good. That's that's great. Have you guys decided what you're doing, uh, how you're rolling out server-side baking on the server? Very carefully. <laughs> I was hoping for that answer, I guess. <laughs> um, have you decided if you're going to do it on the RCs first and then main channel or one RC or all three? It's going to start probably even smaller than a normal RC channel, um, and we're going to be watching load numbers uh, very carefully to make sure that we have enough hardware on the back end uh, so that it will actually scale. Okay. Okay. Um... Let's see, other stuff that's in the pipeline uh, that you already know about. Um, materials, uh, we've made huge strides um, on getting the materials fewer to the point where uh, it's no longer actively doing damage to, the, to, to objects on the grid, or at least not serious damage. So um, I think we'll actually be putting that out where you can see it real, real soon now. Um, watch for uh, news on that in the coming week or so. Um, FMOD EX and the Vivox upgrade is sitting in a queue somewhere waiting to have a chance to be merged. Um, I don't I, I don't anticipate any huge problems with that when it comes. Um, similarly, the Coco viewer fixes for the Mac. Um, oh, uh, one thing we didn't mention and that a bunch of you will be glad to hear um, the Sunshine merge uh, should now build cleanly with GCC 4.6. Um, I don't know and don't expect that it will build perfectly cleanly with anything newer than that, but 4.6 is is now fixed up. They've been using 4.6 for their builds uh, for quite a while now, so we're, we're pretty confident that we've got that shaken out. So... Um, uh, I don't know whether that repo is public or not, Latif. I'll look into it and send a note to the to the distro distribution list if if it is public. Uh, I, yeah, I we we <laughs> I I don't think it will surprise anybody to hear me say that it is not one of our top pro engineering priorities to be on the bleeding edge of compiler technology. So um, uh, we think having gone from 4.1 to 4.6 is, is pretty nice and we're, we're pretty happy with having done that. So, uh, okay, we'll, we'll look into that. Um, and uh, so that stuff is out there. I have not heard an update on the group bands thing. Is Baker here? Uh, I don't. We want Baker. Don't don't see him. So my guess is that he's still out there slogging away at figuring out a solution um, instead of here hearing about how important it is because I think he already knows that. So, uh, but there, there is no, uh, no news on that, which includes there is no bad news on that.
So I think that's all the updates I had for you. So the floor is open. I personally don't have anything. Okay, I guess you all get a half hour back. Is Norton not here? Norton did have a question, actually. Good time. Just, just to slow you down, Oz. Okay. I, I have a new toy to go play with. You guys don't have to, you know, feel like you have to do this right away. Oh, what do you got? I, I I got a new utility vehicle I get to drive around and move Ooh. shit with. EWR search down. Uh Um, what's the, so I'm not familiar with this. Apparently a lot of scripted content uses it.
Uh, no, everybody just shut up. Alark is using text, so we're respecting that. And Oz, I'll apologize now for uh, ruining your playtime. All right. All right, then. Okay, bye. Oh, shit. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I pressed my voice button.
if anyone wants to take on the job of upgrading the curl and reintegrating the changes, uh, I'd be glad to for that project. Um, I, I'm I'm convinced that at least it ought to make a pretty significant difference to pipeline requests in the long run. It may be that we'll have to do more on the back end behind the initial contacts before you could get maximum advantage of it out of it. But uh, since since requests go through more than one layer within our infrastructure, um, so uh, you really can't get the full benefit until until you can get end-to-end -end use of persistent connections uh, and pipelining. But
Uh, we've said we we yeah actually right TCP does that all by itself. Um, so and and we've said before um, using lots of parallel connections is not good behavior, and it it is something that we will uh, that that the network and TCP by itself will disadvantage, um, and if we find that it's causing problems with availability of HTTP sockets on the server side, we will do more to disadvantage it. Um, that is, we'll close surplus connections. Um, so, uh, okay, uh, all right, anything more than four? Stay under four. But that. Actually, you shouldn't need more than two. I mean, there actually isn't great advantage to be gained uh, by using lots of connections. Well, I, I'm referring to, to the same service, multiple connections to the same service. Um, uh, connections to different things. The the server side baking is an entirely different thing than the texture fetching and and so forth. Well, not on the back. It's not. They're not. Textures are all the same service, but not the. Uh, Let's see if you are you, you are interpreting my use of the word service correctly. Server colon port defines a service, and so um, creating multiple you know more than just a couple of connections to the same service actually won't benefit you very much. We may well take steps to ensure that it doesn't. Certainly, 16 is way too high. Uh, you don't have to do very much math to figure out that, uh, that if you do that, the server can't possibly support significant numbers of avatars that are all doing that. The original recommendation was only two. Browsers have not always followed it, but uh, and and we're not going to be that draconian about it. But um, we are going to be looking at very closely, especially as we ramp up larger and larger parts of the grid, uh, at whether or not. Um, server socket starvation is becoming a problem, and if it is, we will adjust the algorithms on the server side to make them more aggressive about closing connections when they're they're all to the same thing. Um, and and there are some ways that that could go wrong, but um, and and that's why we had the angry server test was to explore that. But um, planning ought to work if you if you don't. If you wanna, if you wanna check whether or not I know what I'm talking about, try it. Well, I don't know. I don't know how soon we'll get around to trying, trying it in our viewer. Uh, that's something I'd very much like to do. Um, and if somebody wants to work on that, I will, I will definitely participate in that. 
actively. When I merged in Monty's uh, Corlib or HD Corlib stuff, um, I removed the bandwidth slider that we had for configuring the concurrent connections. So now Firestorm will be doing the same algorithm as the official VIR. Right. Okay, there, there was a question by Whirly much earlier at 12.32. Oz? I'm looking back. What went by? Oh, she just repasted it. It's in latest in local now. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about what the story with 2116 is. Um, I know Maestro was looking closely at that. Uh, he's not in this week. So um, I, I don't know who, who, if anyone, has, has picked up the ball on that one. Uh, I'll, try and, I'll try and dig into it and, uh, and find out, but I, I, I don't know what the story on that is. Check with me at my Wednesday meeting next week, Burley, and I'll see if I can have an update for you. Oh, fun. More GPU problems. Love GPU problems. Yeah, I thought you might like that. We're uh, pretty much at the end of our time here, and um, it's just about the weekend. I have a little bit of stuff to wrap up, and then I'm going to play with my new toy. So thank you all for coming. Um, if there's have anything fun. in the meantime, let me know. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. weekend y'all have fun and thanks to everyone poof